Okay. Well, as you can see, I have this wing uh, riveted, well, or at least riveted in the places that you can rivet it. The trailing edge, as I've mentioned before on the last one, stays Clecoed until I run wires out to the tip in case I put lights or something on it. So these won't get riveted until just before installation. This is the panel that covers the, the uh, fuel tank, so it will stay unriveted until the fuel tank is installed. Onto this little end here. This little piece here, let's see if I can get in here and you can see. This little piece gets fabricated with these magic pliers here. They're just so neat. But this is kind of a chore. If you ever build one of these, let me know. I'll, I'll make yours for you uh, for uh, $15,000. But this piece here kind of rolls up like that and goes in place and then that rivets there. Now that looks pretty easy but it's harder than that. It'll take about two of us to do that um, when it comes time to actually start drilling. But uh, I learned a lot on the last one. This by the way, this piece here gets, another piece gets fabricated back here. This is a lot easier because it's longer and flatter, doesn't have a radical curve like this piece does. So and uh, the leading edge is all riveted. I've marked where the pitot tube will go under here. I'm going to put this on, uh, not right now, but after I get the wing off the bench, I'm going to cut out, put an inspection plate there, and then mount the, the pitot tube to the plate. That way I can take it off. So that's the plan there. I have one little thing down here that bothers me. Uh, when I drilled, let's see, there we go. When I drilled this hole, the little flange that's inside on the nose rib folded over and the drill bit went zoop. And when it did, it made like an oval hole here. So per uh, 4313 standards and Zenith standards, I measured between these two rivets and I drilled and placed another rivet. So structurally it's sound. But if you look here, you can see a very slight edge. So I'll probably drill this A5 rivet out, open the hole up with a number 12 drill bit, and then put an A6 in there. You know, it'd probably be okay, but I would worry about a little stress crack forming right here. Not to mention there's always some yokel that's going to look past everything you do and say, oh, look, you've messed that one rivet up. So. I think I'm going to put an A6 there. The, uh, let's see, I'm going to pause this. This is the tip. The tip goes in here, just so you know. I was down here working, and I saw I had left two Clecos right up in there. So I lifted this skin before I riveted it to make sure I didn't do that anywhere else. Probably a good thing to put on a checklist one day. But the, this tip, here, here's the tip. This is kind of weird. This is the tip that goes here and it's just sort of a it's a flimsy thing I don't really like it uh, before I have like a final installation I think I'm going to either make this in fiberglass or maybe make a, a template here and form one a, a template here let's see like so and form one out of sheet aluminum I, I don't mean something better than this this is not making me happy but anyway this wing's ready to go. That wing's almost ready to go. A little sun coming in there. I'll just come up here like so and give you one more shot of it up here. Any of you that knows me knows I'm holding this way over my head, which isn't very high. So, okay, that's that. Tomorrow is like work around the hangar day. Saturday, I'm free all day. I'll finish this wing, get it off the bench in the cradle and I'll build the tail surfaces. I need to build the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, and the fin, and that completes the airframe. There it just controls an engine. So, uh, more in a day or so.